Hi, in this video I'm going to be demonstrating some packet radio operations using a Raspberry Pi that's running Linux. Even though I'm using a PC, I still need some sort of hardware or software TNC. Today I'm using a TNC Pi expansion board, which you can see is plugged into the top of my Pi. In this video I'm going to focus on connectionless operation. This is the sort of packet radio where I'm sending beacons or APRS locations or bouncing messages off the ISS. For this type of operation there are two main capabilities that I need. I need to be able to monitor every single received packet regardless of whether it's actually addressed to my call sign. I also need to be able to transmit arbitrary single packets. I need to be able to choose the destination call sign I need to be able to choose the content of the message and I need to be able to specify which digipeters it should follow along the way. I may also want to transmit a beacon automatically at a regular interval. Traditionally you would do all of these things by connecting to the hardware TNC with a serial cable and typing specialised commands directly to the TNC. Unfortunately I don't own a traditional TNC, they're pretty expensive now, it's not really an option for me. In this case, the TNC Pi is registered as a network interface on Linux, and I'm going to be running programs on the Linux command line. These programs will talk to the TNC behind the scenes to achieve exactly the same on-air result as you would get with a traditional TNC. This might seem like it adds a lot of unnecessary complexity. It kind of does, but it also creates a lot of opportunities for experimentation. It's easy to run computer programs on a schedule, or to write new computer programs that do things like transmit GPS data or announce DX spots or whatever it is that you feel like doing. You could think of it as maybe software defined packet radio. Let's start with receiving packets. Here I have a station already up and running. If I run ifconfig ax0 I can see my attached radio with a call sign of VK7 NTK-1. For this demo, I'm assuming the setup work like editing AX ports and running KISS attach is already done. To receive packets, I need to run AX listen T A C. AX listen is a program that will sit there and print out all received packets until I terminate it by hitting Control C. You don't actually need all of these options, but I think they're pretty useful. Dash T means that it will print out a timestamp with each packet so you can see when it was received. Dash A means that it will print out the packets that I transmit as well as the ones that I receive so I can look at AX Listen's output and see the entire conversation. Dash C turns on colours which just makes it a lot easier to read. There are extra options which you can see by running man AX Listen but I'm just going to use these three today. So let's go ahead and run that one. I'm going to tune the attached radio to the APRS frequency, which usually has quite a lot of traffic. OK, we've received a packet from the APRS frequency. Here, these are the main features of the output. VHF is the name of the radio port which is defined in AX ports. This is from earlier setup on Linux. Um, the output indicates the call sign of the station that the packet is from and also the call sign that the packet is to. In this case it's a special code for APRS but this could be another VK7 address or something like that. Then this is the series of digipeters that have been involved, the asterisks mean that they've already transmitted previously. So this has come from uh, VK7RAA in the north of the state and VK7RTC, which is quite close to me. It's a UI frame, unnumbered information, which means that it's just a single packet containing information, not part of a larger connection. And here we have that timestamp that, uh, that the packet was received. And finally, there's some information in here. Uh, Coming, obviously this has something to do with Somerset, which is a town in the northwest of the state. So that's what AX Listen tells us. Now I'm going to switch to another frequency and transmit some packets. I'll leave AX Listen running in another terminal so that I can see the results of what I'm doing. 
First, I'm going to transmit a test packet. This station's call sign is VK7NTK1. The dash 1 on the end is the SSID identifying this particular radio. Let's send a message to VK7NTK3, which doesn't really exist. To do that, I'm going to run a beacon command. And if you're familiar with bash, you might realise we don't need all of these double quotes, but we will in a minute. So beacon dash s dash d vk7 ntk3, that's the destination. VHF, that's the name of the radio port that we're going to transmit on. Uh, test message. So I'm going to press enter here. Out in the real world I can see that the radio did actually transmit. And up here in AX listen, we can see the outgoing packet because I used the dash A option. We can see it's from VK7 NTK1, it's to VK7 NTK3, and the content here is test message, which is exactly what I typed. Perfect. Next, I'm going to use a digipeter. There's a second station I'm running here, VK7 NTK2. This one is set up to be a digipeter. So I can modify the beacon command to specify a digipeter path like this. I add another call sign with a space as part of the D parameter. This means that VK7 NTK3 is the destination, but it should go via digipeter VK7 NTK2. So I'll press enter and we'll see what happens. Here we've had two packets appear in AX Listen. The first one was the one that I transmitted from this station to the destination requesting digipeating via VK7 NTK-2. Then, almost immediately after, one second later, we received the same packet again, except this time we have the little asterisk indicating that this was received from the digipeter. This is the digipeated copy. It sort of marks the packet as it goes through to say, all right, I've, I've done my job now. So this is good. I can use the beacon command to send a single packet via a digipeter. This is exactly what I need to make an APRS transmission. So let's do that. I'm going to use a super basic ASCII format that reports my grid square. Beacon dash s dash d, APRS wide, wide one, wide two, two, HF, this is my grid square, test message. So I'm going to tune my radio back to the APRS frequency and then hit enter. As you can see that has been picked up by VK7RTC and also VK7HSE has gotten involved as well. So that's work, that's now been broadcast on the local APRS system. Finally, what if I wanted to transmit this every hour? That feature is actually built into the beacon command. In all of these examples, I've been using the dash s option, which means that it will send the message a single time only. If I leave that out, by default, it will send the message every half an hour. I can change it to 60 minutes by using dash t. So I'm going to run this again, except like this. I'm going to get rid of the dash s and change it to dash t 60. When I press enter, it transmits immediately. What's different now is that the beacon continues to run in the background. If I run PS, I can see that it's still sitting there. So after 60 minutes, it will transmit again and so on as long as the computer is running. I don't actually want to do that, so I'm just going to terminate that program manually. And that's gone now. That won't transmit anymore. To recap, in this video I showed how to monitor packet traffic by using the AXListen command and send packets using the beacon command. There's quite a lot more to AX25 on Linux, but just these two commands can get you a long way. It's literally all you need to have a conversation with someone via the ISS. Have fun and 7.3.